John. Hang on. You had it last week. <laughs> Microphone thing poking me in the dick. Oh, I've got one down here too. Oh. Oh. I've got it this week. Yeah. Microphone down my pants. All right. It's great to be here. I'm excited. Episode number seven. Said we wouldn't last. Here we are. We are. Defying the critics. A lot to get to today. Reset, go. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Um, you start. We're going to delve into some uh, very unusual things from the internet. Right. Introducing BangFit, the fitness method gyms don't want you to know about. It's your idea, not mine. Um, Definitely not. We're going to find out some, some books to read. Mm. and We've got a sponsor. Yes. Who would have thought? We might even get to 10 episodes. Yeah, seven in. I'm very excited because uh, we've been approached by a couple of people who are a bit mm, not really in our wheelhouse in terms of, hey, would you guys be interested in, you know, uh, we're like, yeah, yeah. maybe not. <laughs> but we got approached last week by a company called Body Scan, who are based in Melbourne, uh, and they do DEXA scans. If you don't know what that is, it's like you're lying like a big comfy bed thing, and it measures your body fat, measures how much lean tissue or muscle you have, bone density, and a whole bunch of really good stuff. Does your BMR, basal metabolic rate, tells you how many calories you need per day, kind of at rest. And so basically, you can throw out those old uh, the calipers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who invented those? Oh, the the calipers. calipers. Yeah, like, is that... <laughs> was that a joke? Is this part of the ad? <laughs> it's not part of the ad. Are you ad. digressing? No, <laughs> but, no, they're okay. But the problem with calipers, and I used them for 115 years, is that <laughs> back in the day, well, they take a fair bit of skill because you've got to separate yes. the, you know, so when you kind of, you've got to separate the fat from the muscle. and. So that takes skill. Um, DEXA scan. Line of bed. Line of bed, Easy. be comfy, and uh, but the really good thing about the people from Body Scan, uh, Tommy, is that they've got a mobile DEXA scan. That's right, yes. mobile. It comes to you. Nice. So if you're a gym, or you own a gym, or you're part of a gym, or you're a trainer, or you're a manager, or uh, a PT studio, or any kind of health, wellness, fitness business, or maybe you're just a regular business that would like to get the body composition of some of your staff or all of your staff done for maybe some health purposes, mm -hmm. if you're going to do like a health wellness program with your team to get some starting data, some baseline data, they come to you. Whereas normally DEXA scans the, the most advanced, most high tech, most accurate way to get all this stuff measured. Normally you've got to go to a, a hospital or a clinic mm -hmm. or such setting and you've got to drive in the city um, and you've got to find a park and in and out. I've had it done, it's two and a half, three hour process. Yeah. This way they come to you in a truck, quarter of a million dollar truck with thing on board. I know. Boom. Lots and lots of possibilities to come and do if you to do with your staff or your clients or your members. They come to you. Got to be a minimum of ten people. Yeah. But all right, is your the number? The number is. It'll be on the screen. The number zero four two one nine three five one three one. Pam, have a chat to her. No obligation chat. If you just want to find out more information better than us do, dickheads have supplied. Uh, give Pam a call. All right. The end. Let's get into it. Right. Um, <clears throat> All right, uh, to start us off. Yeah, Tom. I want to talk to you about um, useless feelings. Mm. <laughs> where, do you, where do you come up with these questions? I Google. Give me an example of a, give me an example of a useless feeling. Useless feeling, let me give you the context of a useless feeling, uh -huh. is something that doesn't serve your growth, serve you moving forward in your life. One of them for me is um, it, like impatience. So being impatient about my life progressing or me you know, getting more successful in a short amount of time. Um, like frustration. I mean, these are all normal emotions. So yeah. frustration, anxiety, stress, all that's, I mean, that's kind of normal, but it's whether or not it serves you. Uh, so one is understanding where it comes from. And then two, is figuring out what you can control, what you can't. And that's one of the problems with our, am I just way too laid back here today? <laughs> you were really getting on the couch. Yeah, that's right. But one of the problems is that we live in this instant gratification culture and mindset where we, and we've spoken about this before, but, uh, and some things can be done more quickly and more efficiently these days, but some things can't, you know? So if you want to lose 20 kilos, that's going to take some time. You can lose 20 kilos quickly, but you're not losing 20 kilos of fat. You're just losing yeah. 20 kilos of weight, which will be mostly water. And when you regain that weight that you lost very quickly and you will regain the weight most times, um, 
you might gain a bit more. And it's probably because I hear a lot of this, I hear a lot of podcasts where they're talking about, you know, being frustrated about not having the success you want is counterproductive to you actually becoming successful. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my question is going, like, what? how much merit does this have? Or do these drive you? What's does your this, take on it? it? Well, my, my thing would be, does this does me pondering this serve me or sabotage me? Yeah. Like, does this empower me or disempower me? Is it propelling me forward or holding me back? And you know the answer to all of those. Now, that's one thing. It's another thing to live that because you feel frustrated. Mm-hmm. You don't choose frustration. You feel frustration. Yeah. So the challenge is to... Uh, you know, I forget the name of the lady who wrote that book, but feel the fear and do it anyway, which yeah. is quite a good book. Um, we're talking about books later mm-hmm. or at some stage. So it's being able to recognise, yes, I'm frustrated and or yes, I'm a bit scared or yes, I'm a bit confused or yes, I'm a bit apprehensive, but I know what I should be doing, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And yes, this is taking longer than I expected, but that's okay. I mean, the number one reason... No, it's number one. It's in the top few. In the, <laughs> top number ten. one to three yeah, one to reason three. that people don't succeed is simply just because they don't persevere. Mm. Like we just give up. We just throw in the towel. We just go, oh, it's too hard. It's too long. It's too laborious. It's, you know, but it's more often than not the people with less talent and more resilience and more stickability and stability over time who outperform people perhaps with more talent and potential. Mm. Good. What are you frustrated about at the moment? Like, what would you like? Let's focus on tell me for a moment. What would you like to be different? In my world? Yeah. Not not personal, not you and your girl, and but yeah. professionally. I think happening faster, things happening faster. It, it takes a bloody long time. Yeah. And, and I know that it, in my head I know it won't change, but a lot of the time it, it has taken a long time for me to, to get somewhere. But you're saying the perseverance is what will make you succeed in the end. Yeah. But then I always battle with going, you know, like it's annoying because yeah. it is taking so long. Yeah. And so how does someone persevere? If someone's feeling the but same way. I think also what happens is sometimes it's, it's, you know, we want it to be that linear projection and trajectory. And sometimes it's that. But then sometimes there's a really good book called The Tipping Point. I'm preempting our later segment. Yeah, all right. I can't remember who wrote it, but excellent book, The Tipping Point. Yeah. And sometimes it's like... Spinning your wheels, spinning your wheels, spinning your wheels, boom, and something happens. And so, for example, even with us, when we started doing these, I do a bunch of things, you do a bunch of things. We kind of bumped into each other and had known each other a bit through other things and went, how about we do this? And it's fun and we enjoy it and hopefully we're providing a bit of amusement, a bit of insight, a bit of education. But I know that I can put up... um, Here's me talking about almond milk and I get 45,000 views, right? In, in, well, here's me talking about almond milk, 45,000 views in a couple of days. And then you and I do something like this where we come in, we set up lights and there's this whole production thing with multiple digital cameras and you go and edit and, and you go, oh, 3,000 views or 4,000 views. or. But I know that, well, I think I, that what we're doing is good. But I don't think we have the momentum yet. And it's not because what we're doing is not good. It's because there's no awareness yet. There's no brand yet. There's no expectation because no one really knows about it. Yeah. You know, and so hopefully um, we get to a point where, you know, you and I can do this rather than the thing we try and fit in between the things that pay us money. So we can do this as part of our job. So we're never going to charge people for this. But this is something where we can do better and bigger things and provide greater value to people, better content, more stuff, mm. but because we've reached that tipping point. And that's, see, right now I think we're in that place where we're doing some good stuff, yeah. as objective as I can be, that doesn't necessarily get the recognition that other things might. So what about your blog? So was there, a, like, what happened there? Was there a tipping point? So... Probably a couple of years in. Yeah, it was a very slow grind. But I was, it was funny because I didn't really have expectations. So to me, the fact that it turned into something with a fair bit of traction and a fair bit of reach was amazing. But I didn't really, I wasn't particularly strategic with it. 
But I just wrote, I think this is one of the challenges for people is to just whether or not it's a blog, a vlog, uh, whether or not it's on Facebook or Instagram. If you're in this space where you want to add value and provide quality content, just don't stop. Just yeah. keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. So I wrote, you know, early days, I wrote things that very few people read and got mm. next to no feedback. And then I wrote other things which were shared thousands of times, you know. <laughs> What are you laughing at? I'm going to at? tell you. I've never told you this. This is really funny. So I used to read your blog mm. and I put my friend onto it. I'd just like email because I think that's what you do. You email yeah, people, just go yeah, get yeah. on this now and yeah, start, yeah. start reading. So I sent it to a friend of mine and her and I had this this running. It was a joke, but it was kind of serious. And it was, what would Craig Harper do? Uh, <laughs> so you know, you're not the first person to say really? that. Really? Yeah, that's funny. So I was just like, oh, mate, got this going on. Well, what would Craig do? What would Craig go do? That's, uh, well, you know who else they say, and I don't want to compare myself to him but um, at all. Jesus, there's the, in America, <laughs> in America, there's this thing, and it's like, it's stickers. What would Jesus do? It's like this big thing. What would Jesus? What would Jesus do? Maybe we could do what would Craig do? Yeah, stickers. let's no? not do that. Let's not do that. Uh, apart from the fact that uh, I'd probably... Yeah. upset about a million people all right moving on uh books mm. we've mentioned a few yeah but let's um let Merrin ask this on facebook oh, Merrin. yeah hi Merrin. uh i know Merrin. uh Merrin wilson i met Merrin wilson at one of your camps i'm pretty oh, yeah. sure yeah I think, and, hi Merrin. <laughs> and christian her husband yes yes he's a mate of mine he's a good boy he's funny yeah ah that's what he does all the time um <laughs> He'll know what that means. The rest of you won't. I have no idea. <laughs> so a couple of good books So uh, and quite random. So there's a book by a guy called Adam Alter called uh, Drunk Tank Pink. And it's basically about the way that the world that we inhabit, everything from the colours around us, the environment, nature versus concrete jungle, um, the clothes that we wear, uh, whether or not we're around an angry person or a warm, loving person, how all of this stuff affects us psychologically, emotionally, and physiologically. Mm. Um, I could go into it, but we don't know. But fascinating book. Yeah. Like one of my top five all-time books. Drunk and, Tank Pink. Yep, and I just picked it up because I saw him, excuse me, I saw him um, interviewed on a show and he was interesting, like quite yeah. interesting, but the book's even better. Awesome. Books even better. Another one is called uh, The Five Love Languages by a guy called Dr. Gary Chapman. So... It's got a bit of a Christian undertone, but f forget that in a nice way. Um, it, it's just a great book about relationships and people and the way that we uh, experience or express mm. love. So it talks about five different kinds of love. I won't give them all away, but let's go to some people. Um, some people feel loved when you give them quality time. So you spend time with them, mm. you focus on them, you give them attention, you listen to them. Other people don't. Other people feel love when um, uh, they they experience physical touch. Yeah. When someone gives them a hug or a kiss, or an arm around the shoulder, or where they they feel loved and valued and appreciated. So, and all of these are expanded on. And one of the main reasons he asserts that we don't connect sometimes is because I'm trying to love you, show you love as a friend using my love language, mm. which might be number one, and you're number three. So there's a disconnection. So it's understanding what meets your needs as a mate. If I knew, for example, you would love me to come over and help you do some gardening with you, but it's not yeah. really my thing, then to demonstrate love, I'd come over and help you with the gardening. What do you think my love language is? Um, I think your love language is uh, words of affirmation and with people you love, quality time. Yeah. yeah so I'd like with your dad quality time yeah. with Amy quality time and then with people that you kind of maybe respect or look up to words of affirmation hey mate that's awesome I really love that thing that you did yeah you know so so when you tell me that you love my stuff are you just no it's shit but but what I want to do <laughs> you're just manipulating my lang my love language yeah 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 oh yeah and no, I don't really like it at all and you're a dickhead but here's what I'm doing no just kidding he knows <laughs> No, but you are genuinely very good at what you do. Oh, here we go. Oh, God, thanks, Craig. Tell me cool. more, please. Tell me more. And do you want to spend some time good. together? Uh, okay, so book number three uh, is... Uh, I made myself a little list. I better have a look at my little list. Is 
Oh, The Tipping Point by Malcolm mm. Gladwell. Really good book. He wrote Outliers too. Outliers. And he wrote another one that I was trying to think of. Someone will tell me. You'll probably, yeah. you may I'll put it on it. the screen. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. That's a really good, great book about understanding how things kind of build and build and build and then can just explode. Mm. Amazing stories in that book. You know what I love? Books where they go, here's a bit of theory and science about how things work now. Here's a story. Mm. And the stories in that book are fucking great. I love it. And then the last one, which is quite different again, uh, I forget the actual name of it, uh, but it's Andre Agassi's uh, bio. Okay. So post-tennis, tennis done and dusted. And even if you're not a sports person, it's fascinating. It's a really, really, really insightful book about somebody who was the best in the world for a period of time and the way that they dealt with stuff and didn't deal with stuff and what um, you know, what was going through his head and his heart as we were all looking on going, Andre Agassi, he's awesome. He's a rock solid human being. Yeah. I really like him. Now, um, we've got to move on. Mm, this, is, this is why I've got this here. Right. So last week as I was walking out, you said to me... Yeah, what did I say? Maybe we could talk about some random things from the internet. All right. Like, oh, rather than bringing shit in, let's look at something yeah, stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've had enough vibrating things. Ha! <laughs> oh, giddy up! So, you, how many years you've been? How many years you've been in the PT game in the fitness industry? Uh, well, Tom, thanks for asking. I started in the fitness industry in 1981, <laughs> just after the dumbbell that. was invented. No, no, 1982. Uh, I started PTing people in 87. So my point to it... Um, a long time. Yes, a long time. So you've seen probably every fitness fad or new bloody whiz-bang program that someone's written? I'd say I've seen most of them. Tom? Yeah? I'd say I've seen a lot of them. Why are you calling me Tom now, by the way? I don't know. <laughs> I think there's something loaded coming. I'm a little yeah, bit yeah, suspect. Yeah, you're nervous, eh? Hey? A little bit. All right, this is... So I found this... Mm. After you told me to find something weird on the internet, mm. and it's probably as weird as it's going to get. All right, I'm ready. Introducing Bang Fit, huh. the fitness method gyms don't want you to know about. Here's how it works. Bang Fit is a game-based fitness program that will get you into shape while having the time of your life. Just go to our website and choose a sex This is not real, team. is it? There's Next, not actually a website, but there's an actual gun. Gender. Then sync the website to your smartphone, attaching it to your waist with the official Bang Fit band. The objective of the game <laughs> is to hump along with a video on the screen, copying each movement in order to get your muscles really? working. The better you coordinate your moves, Mum, the more I have nothing to do with this. Dad, you nothing. Iron, it's all him. But you'll be pumping nonetheless. <laughs> so glad you brought that along. So, you thought it was a joke, right? Is it not a joke? It's not a joke. What do you mean it's not a joke? Like, there's an actual, that's an actual program? Is that an actual app or something? So, it's, yes, and, they, and it has, like, tracking, dis, or like, time. Mm. Um, I don't know, they're probably getting heart rate in there somehow with mm. the waistband thing. But mm. I, I, I looked through it. Like, mm. I looked, I read up on it. And did yeah. you take it for any kind of... <laughs> did you go, Ames! <laughs> No. no, no, I did not. But I guess I wanted to bring it because I, I, you read in magazines, Men's Health or whatever they are, you read about them saying how many calories you're burning yeah. in the bedroom. Yeah. What's going on? Okay, so I've had this conversation a few times, even on radio. So uh, there's uh, periodically numbers thrown around like, you know, having sex is like running a marathon. So nothing like running a marathon unless the marathon's about 80 metres. Um, <laughs> so the actual amount, generally speaking, of energy expended during sex. Remember most people, I don't know about you, Tom. <laughs> Tommy, well, have you had sex yet or are you saving no, yourself? Yeah, I'm All getting right. married in six weeks. It's going to be terrific. You'll <laughs> love it. Uh, you should maybe start practising. Yeah? No, just, <laughs> just, just wait. Um, but I don't know. The average, I think... Uh, where do I see somewhere where the average person or couple have sex for start to finish? It's like not longer than 15 minutes. It's like seven, eight, nine, yeah. 11, some minuscule amount. Like yes. No one's having sex. Uh, they might be kissing and cuddling, but having yeah. sex, intercourse, 
for half an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. Are they? <laughs> You'll find that, out in the comments does below. That, does that happen? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, so most people, I think it's somewhere around 15 minutes or less, and I think the calories expended would be less than 100. Yeah. Less than 100. So what's that in equivalent to like a piece of food? Like a piece of bread. Piece of white bread. <laughs> piece of white bread. <laughs> one session's one piece of bread. And again, it depends if you're, um, it depends on the context. If, you're, if your part in the whole procedure is this, oh yeah, that's great, that's great, move around a bit. All right, I'm done. Get out of the way, I can't see the telly. I mean, if, if that's your role, yeah, probably not many calories at all. All right, so don't listen to the magazines. Yeah. In your, uh, I guess... You know, expert opinion. Do you think something like this is going to take off? Uh, no, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. All right, and now I think you've learned not to ask me to bring things from the internet because they're really weird. Yeah, that's weird, but that's okay. We live and learn. It's all good stuff. It's all good stuff, Dom. All right, all right. So finish off. Yeah. We did it last week. Yeah. Thought of the day. What are you, what are you pondering? Well... <clears throat> I wanted to just touch briefly on, remember we've spoken about this thing called subjective reality, which is how we see the world, how we see us in the world, and how we create our own experiences. So probably the most important interpersonal skill is communication in terms of all of our relationships, so at work, at home, out and about. So how do we become good communicators? Uh, Well, a big part of it is understanding who we're talking to and also having an awareness of Uh, the fact that the only person who thinks like us 100% of the time is us. And that when we are giving a message that we think, I might think, for example, that I'm encouraging you and giving you positive feedback, but what you're getting is uh, criticism and bad energy, right? So while I think I'm doing something positive and helpful, your experience is not that. So if I want to create connection with you, I need to at the very least try to understand your your view, your perspective, your insight, your awareness, where you're coming from. Not so that I agree with you or align with you or that I even like you, but that I understand you. So part of my job is I talk with everyone from surgeons and lawyers to the general public, to blokes in prison, to drug addicts and alcoholics. Every week I work with addicts and alcoholics is to understand the way that I might need to share the same or very similar message with a bunch of addicts would not be the same if I'm talking to a group of year 11 girls in a private school. I might be talking about decision-making in life and effectiveness and resilience and health. And the style and the language and the approach I might take with the girls would be totally different, even though I'm trying to create a positive outcome in both cases. So understand um, that, that your reality is not everybody else's. And if you want to create meaningful connection with the people in your world, Try to see whatever the situation or conversation is through their eyes. God, I was just thinking as, as you're saying that, it's like it's you have to think about that going into a conversation. How do you not overthink it then start acting like really weird trying to communicate like them or well, how they need to be? I think you just need to go in mentally prepared. Like I, when I say to you, um, there's a little six-year-old girl, I want you to have a chat to her about ABC you're not going to talk to her as though she's 30. You're just going to do it on autopilot because she's six. Mm. And you're going to go, hey, how are you going? And da-da-da-da-da. And you're going to use the right words and the right tone and the right energy because you do it on autopilot. But grown-ups all kind of look the same. Yeah? yeah. So we need to to have that awareness that, um, you know, when I'm not an addict, but when I talk to an addict, I don't talk to him or her Mm. like I would perhaps talk to you because I... And there's no judgment in that. There's just an awareness that Mm. the way that I need to talk to this person is probably not the way that I would typically communicate about this topic if I want to connect with them and if I want them to respect me and listen to me. But we can say what we want on this show, so... We certainly can, Tom. Or can we? I mean, we're all grown up now. We've got a sponsor on board. Well, we didn't say fuck in the ad. (laughs) Yes, no, we didn't. But right then we did, definitely. Uh, (laughs) Should I start beeping out these? Fucking body scan. (laughs) Get the fuck along. If you want that number again for the, it's right here. The DEXA scan. Check them out. That's it, mate. It's been real. And...